All right, so welcome back to Ecos, the first continent, as well as the New Horizon expansion. For this video, we're just going to kind of explain how these new cards here work. You'll notice that they are real-life locations in real life, like the Serengeti, Mount Kilimanjaro, for instance, the Sahara, the Congo Basin, Madagascar, <laughs> and the Nile River. These are real world locations, obviously. And so um, you're actually going to have these placed, actually they're gonna actually gonna go into the deck of cards. So obviously they have this blue border, so they're going to go into the pile of blue cards. So here we have some, this is a blue card. So if this was all blue cards here, which it isn't, but if it was, it would go into the blue card pile, these would, okay? And then once you, you know, decided to gain a card and it was one of these, you could gain it and put it into your hand, okay? Now, there are some here that uh, actually could possibly be in your hand to begin with. In fact, technically all of these could. If you were doing drafting cards, and the reason why I don't draft cards is it takes a long time to draft cards because it's part of the setup and you're going to be drafting cards, everyone's going to be looking at cards, and they're going to be choosing what to put in their hand, then they're going to pass it to the other player. They're going to look at a bunch of cards, they're going to put it into their hand. And that just takes a long time. Drafting cards, you know, why do you want to do that? I mean, drafting cards, I don't get that. But, I mean, there's plenty of pre-made sets, so I would just rather play with the pre-made sets. And you'll notice this one has uh, this symbol here, the Nile River. And the Serengeti also has another plant symbol. These are both uh, two new handsets that you could start the game off with. And uh, so if you had one of these two handsets, you would actually get to start with, in your hand, one of these two cards, of course. Now, the other ones do not have that, so these would actually just be gained the old-fashioned way, like any other card sitting in the piles of cards. But um, but basically, that with that said, the Serengeti and the Nile River definitely are probably possibly going to get utilized more often because there's a good chance that somebody will start with one of these anyway. Especially if you're playing a two-player game, I would recommend, if you haven't played the new expansion, I would recommend the new, the new sets that include, obviously, these two here. So that way, one of you each would have one of these, obviously, in your starting hand. Now, they're not played the old-fashioned way. Other cards are Ecoast. These are not Ecoast. No, these are only played and only can be played once certain conditions are met. Now, this one, the Nile River, the condition that has to be met is you have to have three landmass, and it doesn't matter which tile it is, desert or grassland, but you have to have three here, three here of water, and then three more desert and uh, grassland here to do this. And if you look at it, you can it can also be in this direction if you want, you know, or like that. It doesn't matter. But it has to look like this. And if you look closely, we don't have anything similar to that right now at all, do we? So you wouldn't be able to play this automatically on your turn. So, you know, you wouldn't be able to play this automatically um, after you Ecos a card, okay? Now this is something you can only play until after you Ecos a card. So you first have to Ecos a card, and then after the card has been Ecos, if it has changed the landmass to fit this need, which it isn't obviously, um, you would get to play this card, obviously. Now, and of course your friends, your opponents here could be helping you out too because they don't know for sure which one you have or if you have any at all, so they could be helping you uh, build up a landmass that would fit one of these criteria. Now, the Serengeti, if you'll look, the Serengeti actually does fit the required needs. It has a grassland of six grass tiles, and it's shaped like this in this direction just fine. And you'll also notice that it says either either has to contain zero or one tree and zero mountains. Well, there's no mountains here, and there's one tree. So that means that this Serengeti actually qualifies to be played. Now remember, a card has to be Ecoast first before you can actually play this. But then after the case, after you've Ecoast a card and it doesn't change the criteria for the Serengeti, 
then you can play the Serengeti and play it in front of you face up like this for all to see. Okay? Then what you're going to do is you're going to grab the tile, that corresponding tile that came with the expansion box. Now these all work with each one of these. There's a bunch of different ones. There's some there's one that's all water, for instance, with some, with one with some desert, uh, deserts on it. But basically, they're going to replace, not replace, but they're actually going to go on top of these tiles, or some of these tiles, anyways. And this one will actually go on top of the entire um, tile, for instance. And so, if there are any animals, mountains or trees or whatnot, have you, that are on the, on the locations that this is going to go on top of, you do not remove them. They're, you're just simply going to move them out of the way temporarily. And then, after you've placed this new big tile on, you're going to place this everything back to where it was, okay? And so now that that's how it looks. So now we've got this huge one right here for the Serengeti. Then, you can score victory points. Uh, you'll gain one victory point when it's placed. So the Serengeti was just placed, you would get a victory point. Now, you will also gain one animal each time an animal is placed on the Serengeti tile. So the next time somebody places an animal, or you, doesn't matter, if somebody places an animal on the Serengeti tile, you score a victory point. That's really interesting. That means that you could possibly score points on somebody else's turn, which is kind of a new concept to Ecos, the first continent, because you couldn't score points on somebody else's turn. If somebody was Ecosing a card, you wouldn't score any points yourself, because it's not your Ecos. But if somebody is Ecosing their card, and they're activating a whole bunch of stuff, and they place an animal right onto your Serengeti tile, which just happened, you would get one victory point right off the bat. Nice. Every time that happens. So if another uh, uh, antelope was placed, for instance, or another animal, doesn't matter which one, as long as they obviously can be placed there, you'd get victory points. And since there's six spots here, that can happen six times. That could easily happen more, maybe, depending on if animals move and stuff. So that's definitely interesting. Now, You'll also gain one victor, victor point each time an animal moves on the Serengeti tile. Now, what does that mean? Well, we have a desert tile here. Uh, let's move the mountain out of the way. We have a desert tile right here, and we have the Serengeti right here at this edge. If there was an animal on the Serengeti tile, and it moved a space, let's say it moved here, that means it moved on the Serengeti tile. Each time that happens, you're going to get a victory point. So that animal moved once, and it's still, it doesn't matter if it's on the Serengeti tile or not. But you're going to get a victory point. Now let's say that antelope moved again, later down the road, on a separate Ecos, for instance. Or just, you know, it's a separate animal, for that matter. Um, let's say the antelope was here, and it actually moved off of the Serengeti tile and onto the desert tile. Well, it still moved, it still started its movement on the Serengeti tile. So you would still get that extra victory point. Now, this is where it's different. If the antelope was to move from a desert tile, for instance, to the Serengeti tile, well, that does not count. You do not get any victory points if the animal is moving from an adjacent tile to the Serengeti tile, to the Serengeti tile. You do not get victory points. It's only when it starts its movement on the Serengeti tile that you would get a victory point. Or if it was just simply moving around on the Serengeti tile, you'd be getting victory points. Now, remember, if this antelope was to move from here to here, that does not mean you get two victory points. That means you still just get one victory point because it's per movement. It's not per tile it moves. It's per movement. So that's something to note. But still, you're going to get some extra victory points, possibly on other people's turns um, obviously, especially if there wasn't much landmass anyways, and people still want to get their victory points for placing animals, you're going to get some victory points for that as well. And that's basically how the Serengeti title how it works. And that's basically, obviously, how it's going to work. Now, this one here is pretty self-explanatory as, as the setup. You, know, you would have to have a grassland tile here, a desert tile here, a desert tile here. You'd also have to have a mountain on this one, a mountain on this one, a mountain on that one, and a tree on that grassland tile as well. And then if you had all those conditions, then you could place the uh, Mount Kilimanjaro tile as well as the corresponding uh, special uh, mountain that goes with it. So, um, for instance, this. And this would go on top of it. 
replacing the mountains that are already on it, as well as the tree, I guess, as well. You would replace all of that with this, basically. Pretty cool, though. It's the only one that has this, too. This uh, really cool uh, mountain, Mount Kilimanjaro tile. But that basically, that's what you would do if that was the case. I'm not going to try to place it out there and, and explain it the other way. But you get the point. It has to meet that kind of criteria. And then you'll get five victor points when it's placed. And then each time any player places a mountain, doesn't matter where it is, each time any player places a mountain, it does not, it does not talk about Mount Kilimanjaro, okay? So you can't, you can't place a mountain here because Mount Kilimanjaro is too big anyway. So anytime anybody places a mountain, doesn't matter where it is, it can't obviously place it in water, but anytime anybody places a mountain, you're going to gain that symbol and that symbol every time. So that's kind of cool, uh, for sure. Now the Sahara here, um, let's talk about this. So if you obviously are going to need three desert tiles and two desert tiles just like that, and it cannot have any mountains. So that means that uh, there won't be any trees here either because they no trees can be placed on a desert tile that doesn't have a mountain. So you don't have to worry about that, but you do have to worry about no mountains. So if a mountain is placed, you have this exact setup, but there's a mountain like right there. Oh well, that means you won't get to uh, play the Sahara card here and do all that. Okay, um, let's see here. Let's read what it says. I don't actually know 100% what this does yet because I haven't actually read it. So let's see here what it does. Each time a wild symbol is drawn, you may call Eco. Well, that's interesting. And then on your turn, replace any space adjacent to the Sahara's habitat with a desert and gain one victory point. That's interesting. When the game ends, if the habitat containing the Sahara has more spaces than any other habitat, gain whoo -hoo, seven victory points. Wow. That is a game changer right there. Okay, so. And that's why you'd call out Ecos. Okay, I get, I get why you call out Ecos. So each time somebody draws the wild symbol in the element bag, you may call Eco. And the reason why is because you're actually going to be doing something that would normally be on a card where you would call out Ecos once you had all of the elements covered up with a, with a cube, right? But you're obviously not doing that. But that's why you're going to call it Ecos. So that way you can replace an adjacent space, an adjacent tile space to the Sahara habitat here and replace it with a desert habitat, making the Sahara bigger. Yes, there you won't be, you won't be adding the big giant uh, desert, uh, you won't be adding more of these big ones, okay? You're just going to have this big one, and it's going to start branching off with a bunch of desert tiles surrounding it. But it's still going to be part of this. It's still going to be part of the Sahara in the end of the day. And then, at the end of the game, if the Sahara habitat has more tiles than any other habitat, meaning more tiles than water, more tiles than the grassland, and more tiles for separate desert habitats, you'll gain seven victor points at the end of the game. That could be a game changer. Maybe uh, a player has already reached 60 or 80 points and you're like 57 points. And then you get this, you gain, you have the Sahara card in, in front of you in play and you have the largest Sahara, your Sahara habitat is the biggest and you gain seven points. Well, now you just beat your friend. So that's a game changer, maybe, but that's still a game changer. That's really cool. So that's how the Sahara is going to work, and I thought that would be the hardest one to understand and explain, but obviously it wasn't so bad after all. Okay, so the Congo Basin. Well, this one is going to have to have these four grassland tiles next to each other, and then you're going to have to have a tree on each one. Also, this must contain one or more mountain and at least one tree on each space. So yes, there has to be a tree on each space, but it has to have at least one mountain on one of these spaces. At least one. Meaning there can be still a mountain here, 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 here. It's still can, There can be a mountain on each one of these spaces, but there must be at least one mountain on this space. And then obviously, if you can Ecos a card and then play this after the uh, circumstances, uh, conditions are met, then you can play the Congo Basin and place the... Uh, 
uh, Congo tile, obviously, which is this. You get to place that, okay? Then, when the game ends, gain two victory points per tree on the Congo Basin tile. Well, that's interesting. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> you're not going to gain victory points when you play this. But at the end of the game, there could possibly... I would imagine all of these trees are going to be here. There are some cards that actually remove trees. So if that's the case, then you might get less points. But that's not likely to happen, honestly. But you can at least score two victory points per tree on the Congo Basin tile. So at the end of the game, you're at least going to get two, four, six, eight points. But here's the thing. When you have a mountain on a grassland, you can actually have two trees on each tile. So if you had a mountain here, here, and here, you could have two trees on each of these. So instead of it being two, four, six, eight, it's going to be 16 points. That is a game changer because when the game ends, you're going to get those victor points. So yeah, somebody ends the game, they... They, they end the game, they have 60 points, you have the Congo Basin. You are only like 10 points behind the other player. But you have, you know, two trees on each of these spaces, thanks to all the mountains. You gain 16 points, you just beat them. <laughs> that is a game changer. Another uh, end game scoring that's also obviously new to Ecos, the first continent. Awesome. So that's two cards now. I believe, that can score at the end of the game. One, uh, gain you victory points at the end of the game. So the Sahara does it, and the Congo Basin does it as well. Cool. All right, so here we have Madagascar. So Madagascar is going to have to have a layout like this. Actually, let's do this. Let's exchange this, because it used to be water, remember? And I did something with a card. If you watched the other video, I did something with a card where I, I, I replaced it with a... A land mass, but let's say this was water right here. Okay, up to four of the water spaces may be the edge of the landscape instead of water. So, um, this one, for instance, if this wasn't here, that would be fine for the setup for to get after you equus a card, getting to play this card. That would be allowed because you can have at least you can have up to four uh, that are at the edge of edge of the landscape. Okay, you can have up to four at the end of the landscape. So here's one that's not. So that still meets the criteria. And it doesn't have any other placement rules, so there you don't have to worry about trees or mountains that are on Madagascar here. But once you meet the requirements, you're going to obviously um, do this. And let's pretend uh, these aren't here anyways. Okay, let's take these off. But let's go ahead and place this on top of this. Now it does not matter where you place it. Because remember, this does not have to be desert or grass. It can be either or, or it can be one of each. It doesn't matter. So, you know, we'll do that. Just to, you know, there you go. There's the example. So now Madagascar tile has been placed. Okay, gain three point three victor points when it's placed. Ooh, nice. And then gain two victor points each time a token is placed on or adjacent to the Madagascar tile. A token, that's an animal. So every time an animal token is placed either on Madagascar or adjacent. So if this fish was placed adjacent to Madagascar, you're going to get two victor points each time. If this antelope was placed on Madagascar, you're going to get two victory points as well because it was placed on Madagascar. So that's what that means. Pretty simple, straightforward, and easy, right? And obviously, you could get some victory points for this as well. Okay, we have one more to explain. Okay, so... The Nile River here, and I'm not going to demonstrate this one by placing it and moving a bunch of tiles around, because this this is already a fairly long video. But, anyways, uh, you can have you're going to need three grassland or three desert or one of each or whatnot have you on opposite sides with three water tiles in between, kind of making it look like an actual river. And remember, it can be like this, it can be like this. It doesn't matter. But basically, it has to look like the Nile River. And then you're going to place uh, the uh, once that's done and you eke a card and you can and you meet the qualifications. You're going to place this one, this Nile River tile, you know, actually on the water, obviously, and you're going to place it. Okay. Then you're going to get two victory points when it was placed. Then you'll gain one victory point each time an animal is placed in the habitat containing the Nile River tile or each time a water is placed as part of the habitat 
containing the Nile River tile. So if you are going to make the Nile River bigger, kind of like the Sahara, if you're going to make the Nile River bigger, you're going to get a victory point each time you place a water tile to add on to the river, making it nice and big. Now remember, you are making a river, you're not making an ocean, so it's going to need to stay in a line. You can go left, you can go right, but you can't just be simply placing water tiles forming this giant lake or ocean, okay? You're going to need to still place it as a river. But you're going to get a, a victory point each time you add on to the river in either direction you decide to do, right? And then obviously you're going to get a victory point each time an animal is placed there as well. So if your friends are doing it as well, or should I say your opponents are doing it as well, you're going to get victory points on their turn each time. That's cool. I like that. And so that's all of the new cards from Ecos the First Continent that are like this. They did add new cards, obviously, normal cards to the game, and I've probably gone over some of them at some point. But the point is, you understand now the new way of playing with these cards, and they're not that hard. I mean, I thought, for instance, I didn't even look bother to look at this one, but I thought this one was going to be hard just because of all the text. But, you know, I looked at it, and I instantly figured it out, Why, including... <laughs> why you're going to call out Ecos in the first place. And so, yeah, very easy and simple and straightforward all of these new uh, landscapes are. And so basically, that's all I'm going to talk about for Ecos, the first continent, especially the expansion New Horizon. So hopefully these videos on Ecos, the first continent, have been helpful to you in understanding how to play the game, as well as the terminology of the cards, and obviously these new cards as well. So thank you guys for watching. Don't hesitate to leave a like if you liked this video, if you watched it all the way through, or for that matter, just simply like to one of the other videos prior to this. Don't forget to leave a like on one of those. Just simply click on the, go back, back onto one of those other videos. Click on it real quick that you liked it. If you didn't, if you forgot to leave a like on one of the other ones, that would help me out. It would only take a moment to do so. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys again next time.